Crema, the velvety golden brown layer that crowns a shot of espresso, is ubiquitous as an essential sign of a properly pulled shot. An experienced barista is aware of its importance and can use it as a visual aid in analyzing the elements of an extraction. And while many proficient coffee brewers have a familiarity with crema, the mechanisms behind it may remain confusing. In this video, I will dive into the crema and attempt to demystify its composition, explore its correlation with extraction quality, understand its role in flavor perception, and investigate its influence on the shot as a whole. First, a little background. The term crema was coined in 1949 by Achille Gaggia, the inventor of the modern espresso machine, as part of a campaign to promote his new coffee, which had a natural layer of cream, or crema naturale, as he called it. This creamy layer was the result of using high-pressure water to extract the coffee, while earlier iterations of the espresso machine used steam. This crema is a semi-stable foam formed during the high-pressure extraction of coffee in an espresso machine. It is more specifically a colloidal dispersion, a situation where one substance is finally and evenly distributed amongst another substance. In the case of crema, this is the dispersion of CO2 gas in coffee. This is a complex interface of different compounds in various phases. Let's break it down. The majority of the carbon dioxide gas comes from the roasting process. During roasting, the thermal decomposition of many compounds in the beans produces CO2. Some of this gas is lost into the atmosphere during and after roasting, while some of it becomes trapped in tiny pores in the beans. The longer coffee sits after roasting, the more CO2 slowly escapes. As soon as coffee is ground, another release of CO2 occurs as some of the barriers preventing its escape are removed. The remaining CO2 is percolated out of the grounds during espresso extraction as the high pressure water forces it out, along with other compounds from the coffee. This mixture becomes the crema. It contains the CO2, water mixed with microscopic oil droplets, coffee ground solids, and various solute particles including sugars, fats, proteins, and caffeine. The exact composition of this mixture, largely determined by the origin of the coffee, how long it was roasted, and how the shots were pulled, will alter the crema's attributes such as density, color, stability, texture, and so forth. Let's take a closer look at these specific factors and how they affect the crema. Coffee bean type. Arabica and Robusta produce significantly different crema. It was once believed that adding Robusta to espresso was essential for getting good crema, but this is largely a misconception. Robusta usually does produce thicker, lighter colored crema, while Arabica can be more delicate and darker. Where and how the beans were grown will have an influence on the crema as well. Different growing conditions will influence the balance of compounds in the coffee and how it responds to roasting and brewing. Roast freshness. The amount of CO2 remaining trapped in the coffee is directly proportional to recency of roasting. This is partly why coffee that has just been roasted leads to poor extraction quality. The CO2 bubbles inhibit the water from reaching deeper into the grounds, causing weak extraction. Therefore, coffee must rest for a day or two after roasting. Coffee that has rested about 48 hours makes great crema. Any fresher and the extraction is inhibited and the foam formation is excessive. Coffee aged past a month will produce visibly diminished crema. Water quality. The amount of ions and impurities present in water can alter the extraction quality and introduce new solute particles. Bicarbonate, an ion naturally found in water, can contribute additional carbon dioxide as it thermally breaks down during extraction and from neutralization reactions with the acids in coffee. This is why it is important to use well-filtered water with proper mineral content. Grind consistency and recency. How evenly, finely, and recently beans are ground has a significant impact on crema formation. A shot pulled immediately after grinding will have visibly more crema than one pulled even 60 seconds later. Particle size consistency is also important for balanced extraction. Coffee ground too fine inhibits the flow of water to the point it doesn't emulsify the CO2 quickly enough to form a stable foam and instead results in a dark liquid with diminished crema. Coffee ground too coarse will cause a rapid release of trapped CO2, while not giving enough time to extract the flavorful compounds still in the grounds, resulting in a lot of crema, but a bland tasting shot. Tamping and dose. The amount of coffee in the portafilter basket and the pressure with which it is compacted play a role in the development of crema. A greater volume of coffee gives more raw material to extract from, as well as inhibiting the flow of water. 
Likewise, a firm tamp reduces the space between coffee grounds, leading to a longer and delayed extraction. For a good espresso shot, tamp, dose, and grind must all be in harmony. Water temperature. Sufficient water temperature is required to emulsify, that is to say, disperse one substance into another in which they do not readily mix, the water and the coffee into crema. This is why it is important to use a warm group and port filter so they do not absorb too much energy during the brew cycle, robbing the espresso of extraction energy. As mentioned earlier, crema is a great visual indicator of the quality of an espresso shot. The formation of stable, smooth crema usually coincides with proper extraction. So essentially, the techniques that produce good flavor and aroma will also produce good-looking crema. Crema itself, however, does not add much to these qualities, and when tasted separately, it is quite bland and astringent. Let's take a deeper look at using crema to diagnose a shot. Color. The crema should ideally have a rich reddish-brown to blonde color. A lighter whitish crema might indicate excessively fast extraction, while a dark crema could indicate too slow of an extraction. Texture. The crema should be creamy and consistent with a smooth texture and rest evenly on top of the espresso. Uniformity. The crema should spread evenly across the surface of the espresso without any visible gaps or separation. Inconsistent crema could point to uneven tamping, poor grind quality, or other puck preparation problems. Persistence. The crema should persist for some time on the surface of the espresso. If it rapidly dissipates, it might indicate under-extraction from too fine a grind. Or it could be the coffee is not very fresh. Tiger Stripes. The colloquial term for the dark caramel-colored lines appearing in the flow of espresso and the modeling on top of the shot. The reason for this, according to research by Ernesto Illy and Luciano Navarini, link in the description, is fine, insoluble particles resulting from the fracturing of beans during grinding. These fines slip right through the holes in a portafilter, resulting in the contrasting dark color of tiger stripes. Some coffees will readily produce tiger stripes, while others will not at all. In the coffees that do, I usually find their appearance right when I get the shot where I want it to be, so I think they can be a good visual aid in dialing in your shot. So keep an eye out for tiger stripes, but remember that it can't always be depended on. While healthy crema is a good sign, it is far from being a sole determinant of a flavorful shot. Use it as a guide, but it is important to not sacrifice taste in the pursuit of perfect crema. So that about wraps it up. Espresso brewing is an intricate process of which crema is an essential part. Good healthy crema almost always correlates with proper extraction. By carefully studying your crema, you can adjust your parameters of brewing to get better shots. So what do you think of crema? Have you tasted crema separately from the rest of the shot? There is a lot of debate about tiger striping. Is it a good sign? Is it a bad sign? What are the mechanisms behind it? The paper I linked below has a lot of interesting reading on it. What is your opinion on tiger stripes? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button while you're down there. I sure appreciate it. Thanks for watching.